the easiest way for you to go live super quickly outside of the phone. We're talking desktop streaming here. In this video, we're comparing Restream Studio to StreamYard to see which one is the right choice for you. We've got 13 comparison points plus a bonus for you, so let's dig in. Now, let's talk about the four levels of live streaming to figure out where StreamYard and Restream Studio fit into this. The four levels of live streaming are level one, the phone, Super, super simple, right? You have everything you need to go live. But when we start talking about desktop streaming, we're looking at level two. That's Restream Studio and StreamYard. These are cloud-based services where you log into the browser, you don't have to download anything, and they're super, super quick and simple to get set up and just go live. Now, the downside of a level two is that you're not gonna get the highest potential quality from that stream because you're not using a downloadable app, which is level three, Ecamm Live for Mac or vMix for PC are my recommendations on a level three. The downside of those are that it requires a little bit more time investment to figure it out, get it set up, and then go live from there. And then level four is of course all the fancy studio stuff, extra gear to make it push button simple, and really where your strategy is alongside your tech so that you are making waves with your live streams. All right, if you're new around here, please do type new in the comments. I would love, love, love to meet you. And if you are new, then you don't know me. Hi, I'm Laurie Petrucci from Livestreaming Pros, where we help you create professional live video that's uniquely you. And I'm not alone today. I have Melanie in the house. Hi. Hey, yeah, I'm Melanie Diane Howe, where I actually love to help people put themselves out there online using social media, but I want them to do it authentically. And I have this thing where I say, we can be scrappy, but scrappy doesn't have to be crappy. Now, here's the cool thing. Melanie is a brand ambassador for StreamYard, and I'm a brand ambassador for Restream. So I thought that it would be fun. Hey, where's my Restream cup? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would be fun for us to hash it out together and go through all of the pros and cons and the differences of each platform. So we have 13 points that we're going to compare. All right, Mel, are you ready? Yeah, let's dive in. Let's do it. Now, keep in mind here that there isn't a right answer for every single person out there. Yeah, I, you're gonna find that I think that both of these applications are extremely similar, but different. And so it's just gonna come down to, you have to decide which one you think is best for you. Okay, first let's talk about where these applications will allow you to stream to. So this is StreamYard. And as you can see, we've got the big players. We have Facebook, we have LinkedIn, which you have to be approved for at this time. And then of course, YouTube, Periscope, that's going away. And then you have the custom RTMP option along with Twitch. Now, Luria, let's see where Restream will stream. Okay, so Restream has a lot more options, 30 plus options, as you can see. You can go pretty much anywhere that allows live streaming. Uh, you can do custom RTMP. You can, of course, do uh, API. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. We'll cover that in a different video. Okay, and this is the perfect segue into talking about pricing because where you can stream is potentially reliant on the pricing model that you choose or the plan. Yeah, so what's great is that both of these applications actually have free versions, but they also have some features that are required for you to have a paid plan for. So for example, StreamYard actually will allow you to go to all of these destinations on their app platform with the free plan. But Luria, I know that Restream has a few limitations on their free plan in regards to the destinations. So yeah, as you can see on the free plan, you can simulcast to 30 different locations. But the one caveat here is that on the standard plan is where you're gonna be able to get access to Facebook pages and groups. So if that's your destination of choice, then you will need to use the standard plan. Now, my personal preference is the pro version because you get to remove all branding, uh, you get a ton more features, and you get to upload your own custom graphics into Restream Studio. So that's hugely beneficial for your branding. Okay, so for StreamYard, very similar. The free plan's amazing. However, you are gonna have StreamYard branding in your stream. So if you want your own custom look, you're definitely wanna go and look at the basic plan where you can add your own custom graphics, your own logo, and you can also 
also multi-stream to multiple destinations at the same time, which we'll cover here in a little bit. Now for professional plans, the biggest difference there is that you can actually stream in 1080p. But keep in mind, not everybody with Facebook right now can even stream 1080p. So this is critical if you're definitely wanting to go live on YouTube. And that brings us to comparison point number three, the streaming features. What all can you do in these platforms? Now, both platforms have mostly similar things. For instance, in Restream, uh, they call it captions. These are lower thirds or call to actions that you can manually add throughout your stream. And StreamYard calls these banners and tickers. So the same concept, except they're just called something different and they look a little bit different. Now, one of my favorite features that both platforms allow you to do very easily is display comments. You simply click and you can pull a person's comment up on screen, which is a really great way to get engagement from your viewers. So both platforms have them, but Restream has a new beta at this time of the recording called Chat Overlay, where you can display the entire chat on screen, not just a single comment. Overlays. Both platforms allow you to use simple overlays. So as Luria said, both platforms will actually allow you to add your own custom transparent PNG files to get a look and feel that you want. But one key difference between StreamYard and Restream is that with StreamYard, you can actually upload an animated GIF file or GIF, depending on how you prefer to say it. You can do this in both the overlay section and the logo section, and that animated GIF will play. And of course, you can share your screen to do demos or visualize what you're talking about. And you can share either your whole screen, a separate monitor, a Chrome tab. You have a lot of options from that perspective. And StreamYard now just recently added a new feature where you can not only just share your screen, you can also share video locally from your computer, which is really great for longer videos, or if you need to play part of a video and you wanna pause it. And I love how they've actually now made it where you can share this video and you can be on screen while the video is playing as well. Now, one of the things I really love about these applications is just by the click of a button, you can also change the way things are displayed on screen. Now, StreamYard has seven different views, but Restream has the views that are a little bit different. So, Luria, what do you think about Restreams? In Restream, you also have seven different layouts. In the bottom bar, you're not seeing all of the layouts, you just are missing the solo layout, but you can do that easily just by clicking off on the screen share. And I personally prefer the layouts from Restream. Uh, they feel a little bit more full, if that makes any sense, a little bit more engaging and a little bit more variety. Then of course, this is one of the biggest differences between Restream and StreamYard. So it's personal preference. Yeah, it really does come down to personal preference because I actually prefer StreamYard's layouts <laughs> over Restream's layouts. But one thing that's really cool too that I wanna mention here is that both of these apps will let you drag and drop and switch the way things are also uh, being displayed. Comparison point number four, brand settings. Of course, you want your videos to be on brand and engage your viewers with your colors, right? So you can change out your colors, your logos, uh, and also Restream gives you plenty of options options than StreamYard for different videos and backgrounds. Now, one of the really cool things that these apps that you do as well is upload a video that you can play during your live stream. This is great for countdown timers or even videos you wanna play in the middle of a stream. Number six, RTMP. Now, RTMP is a way of connecting to these platforms and to send the signal of your stream out to wherever you're sending it to. Both of the platforms allow you to start an RTMP connection by inputting from somewhere else the information that you get into StreamYard or Restream. One example of why you might need this is if you're gonna do an event and you're going to stream out to Facebook, YouTube, and a private location on your website using something like Vimeo Live or Wowza. So then you can send out that signal automatically to Facebook and YouTube, and then you're gonna grab that RTMP information to put into your private location. That way you get the best of both worlds. Now, something else that's really cool that both applications will let you do, and that is edit the destinations midstream. So let's say, for example, you were going live 
publicly on a Facebook page and going live in a private Facebook group, and you wanted to reserve your Q&A for your group members only. You would actually edit the stream and turn off the Facebook page midstream, which would end the broadcast on your Facebook page and still resume inside of the Facebook group. Number eight, the guest experience. Now, the guest experience for both Restream and StreamYard are very similar, uh, different visuals, but the same buttons. So you've got the mute button, the camera on and off, share screen, you can choose your settings, and um, you have private chats as well as the social chat and what your what people are commenting on your live video. Now the key difference right now with StreamYard is that your guests can actually join and not have themselves on camera. Not everybody wants to be seen. So this is great for like if you want to field questions from your audience and they don't want to share their face. That's actually pretty cool. It is pretty cool. Now, the ninth thing that we wanted to cover today is the audio settings. So these apps actually allow you to make some, a few minor adjustments to the audio, like echo cancellation, which is great when you're interviewing a guest. So one of the differences is that StreamYard also right now allows you to auto adjust your microphone level. And you can even turn this on or off for your guest in case their audio levels are not quite where you want them to be. Now in Restream, it actually separates out echo cancellation and noise suppression. So noise suppression is going to help with a noisy environment. So if you don't have a mic that's really good or close to your mouth and you you have a lot of room noise, um, noise suppression can be good for that. Echo cancellation is most used when you or your guest aren't wearing headphones. However, that creates a ducking experience where you can't really talk over each other. It sounds awkward. So at least they give you the option to separate those two things out, which I really like. Okay, feature number 10 is output quality. Now, here's the deal, it's pretty simple. They both essentially will output up to 1080p, 30 frames per second. Number 11, my favorite thing about Restream, analytics and detailed analytics at that. Uh, you get so much information about your stream, about the views, about chats, about engagement. You can go crazy. I have a video all about reading the analytics at Restream. Uh, link is in the description and links to both of these services also are in the description. But yeah, this is my favorite thing and I don't believe StreamYard has analytics. Oh. No. <laughs> Unfortunately not. Not right now. Not yet. <laughs> hey, StreamYard, come on, <laughs> please, please. All right, it's safe to say that Restream wins on number 11, but number 12 is Facebook group for support and a community. StreamYard has an amazing Facebook group that I love being a part of because not only do I get to ask questions and get answers, I also get to get inspired by a lot of other great StreamYard users as well. So I love that they have the Facebook group for a lot of reasons, but Luria, what about Restream? Do they have a group? Hmm. Well, we couldn't find one, right? <laughs> we couldn't find one. <laughs> so if Restream has one, we couldn't find it. <laughs> And now number 13, but we do have a bonus, so don't go anywhere. Now here is another feature that StreamYard provides you. They provide you to do a record only. So what this is actually gonna allow you to do is use the platform to display your banners, to create a really great video, but not to be streamed live. This is great for doing pre-recorded videos for your YouTube channel, for course videos, or even tutorials. So I think this is a pretty fun bonus feature that StreamYard has that as of right now, we couldn't find one in Restream. Right, what you could do as an alternative in Restream is go live privately to just you, say on Facebook, or do an uh, unlisted video on YouTube, and get the recordings from that. So you could do it that way, but it is not a feature. And bonus! <laughs> All right, this is a bonus because you don't necessarily need it for a great experience using these systems, uh, but the mobile experience. Yeah, so even if you are on the go and you need to use an iPad or your phone, you can actually still access almost all of these amazing features just using your mobile uh, web browser inside of your phone or your tablet. All right, there you go. I know this was lengthy, but now you have an in-depth look at both platforms, Restream, or StreamYard, which is your personal preference? What are the features that you need to have a great live streaming experience for yourself and for your viewers? Okay, so it comes down to this. 
Both of the applications are incredibly similar as you saw, but what's really great is they're both great applications. So you really can't go wrong with, with, with the one that you choose. However, you may find that one has a look and feel that you like over the other. Again, it goes back to personal preference. One thing I will always say is that if you're already using one versus the other, then just stick with the one that you have because then you don't have to learn a new platform. So we would love to know in the comments which platform that you're gonna go with or what other questions you maybe have about these level two browser-based live streaming apps. Mel, you're awesome. Thank you so much for this comparison. Hey, happy to help. Happy to be here. Thanks, Luria. Now, if you want to learn more about Restream, StreamYard, and all of the live streaming techniques that you can use to improve your professionalism and streaming experience, check out these playlists right here, and I'll see you in the next video.